to Sailing Vessel Equus. Today we are doing a tour of our boats, our home, the Bavaria C57, a German made yacht and we can't wait to show you around. The C57 was actually one of the first yachts designed by Kasuti Yacht Design. They're an Italian design firm and they really revitalized Bavaria's line of sailing yachts. Um, the C57 is the largest of the Bavarias and one of the things that we really liked about this yacht was the interior. Um, it's definitely got a bit of style and you can, you can really see that they've thought about a lot of the details. So with that, let's show you around. And welcome to the bedroom. So one of the things I love about this boat is the master cabin in terms of the size of the bed. As you can see, it's huge. In some master cabins at the front of the boat or the bow of the boat, you would have storage underneath the bed. Underneath this bed, you have batteries and we have the water tanks. The batteries are for the bow thruster at the front. So we have these amazing little lights. You press them three times to do three different things. Red light for night vision, off, and then white for reading. Also, they double up as a USB. So you can plug things in like little fans or phones. So although we don't have the storage under the bed, we have a huge amount of storage in the cupboards at the top, along here at the side, and also in the floor. The boat slightly leans to port. Here is a little dressing table and we have more space underneath here as well for storage. Some boats have a toilet and a shower room all in one, but this is quite nice in the master cabin. We found actually it works really well because James sometimes likes to spend more time in the loo than myself. So we have one shower room, which is separate from the toilet. And here is a separate toilet. A special feature Bavaria created was sound insulation, so that there is optimum privacy between the saloon area and the master cabin. One of the great things about this kitchen is that whilst you're sailing, you have something to hold on to. Okay, we have a fridge freezer. So there is the fridge, and they're in drawer form, and the freezer. And they look fairly small, but they're quite deceiving how much you can actually get into them at one time. Whilst we're sailing, we don't have these items out. We have room for them in the other cupboards. However, James and I do like our kitchen appliances. So we have a toaster for James, Vitamix for me, a mini me wannabe Vitamix, and toaster for a toasty machine for James. So as you can see, we have lots of top cupboard space. The beauty of these, although there's a slight chink in the armor to these, and I'll explain why, they open outwards like that. So whilst you're sailing along, nothing's going to fall out. However, a shorty like me finds it a little bit difficult to get to the bag. But I would rather that than everything fall out of my face. Okay, so I'm not so keen on this feature, but it has proven very helpful when we've done passages, especially long passages like the Atlantic, the microwave. So I'm thinking that Maurizio, the designer, was made a little bit of an alcoholic because he's designed not one, not two, but three wine cellars. So now I'm on the port side and as you can see I've got loads of room here. It's really not that much smaller than my flat in London. So again I'm wedged in here if we're sailing. This is the oven and it's on a gimbal. Again, it's always good to remember to put this on a gimbal if you're sailing, otherwise everything falls out of the oven. Let's 
cupboards are really cute. They store all of our teas, coffees, and all our bits. So we have a dishwasher on the boat. Yes, we have a dishwasher. It's in this drawer here. In here, on the port side of the kitchen, is an area where we can keep all of our kettles, our coffee machine, so that when we're sailing along, we can just put them in, they're safe, we know where they are, and obviously they're not going to get turned over. The Bavaria C57 actually sleeps eight people. You have two people at the front, two people in the port aft, and two people in the starboard aft. I think I've got that around the right way. Port, starboard, yes. The other two are here. So what happens is we have some cushions that go on top here and this moves down. Let me show you. And then this goes on here like soup. Bed number four. One of the things that James and I love more than anything is to sit back here and watch the odd Netflix series. Philippa? Philippa? Yeah. <laughs> Bavaria totally changed its build technique. It now uses vacuum infusion. All of the interior is built in sections, but not on the boat, off the boat. They use bulkhead receivers, so the Ford cabin, for example, would be slotted straight into the bulkhead receiver. Maurizio insisted on using longitudinal strings which run up the sides of the yacht to keep it stiff. With the use of these bulkhead receivers, longitudinal strings and the vacuum infusion technique, it makes the boat stronger and lighter. It also has better protection against osmosis. The furniture in the Bavaria is therefore no longer structural. The structure is there in the hull and the deck. This special build process also ensures an 80% reduction in emissions. So one of the things I really liked about the design of this boat was that it had a proper chart table. Now, admittedly, we don't look at charts often. Um, we do have charts on board, but we've got computerized charts on our um, chart plotters, on our phones, on our iPads, on our computers. So really the chances of us losing all technology and not being able to look at a ch chart is pretty slim. But the main reason I like this is because this is my little office. I've got my Mac here. Um, I can do everything here that I can do in the UK. Generally in the, in the Caribbean we don't have too much problem with internet. Um, we can usually get um, a 4G connection in most places that we go to. Um, so really it's just like working from home. So also at the chart table we have all the controls for the boat. We've got a B&G multifunction display. We've got the VHF radio. Um, we've got the fusion sound system, we've got controls for the generator and we've got our um, battery monitor which shows us the health of the batteries. Um, so we've got actually three of these multifunction displays on the boat, two at the helm and one at the chart table and from here we can control things like lights, we can control um, the pumps on the boat, we've got all the bilge pumps here and the shower pumps, we can see the level of our water tanks. We can also see the level of our fuel tanks. We've also got a, a battery monitor here as well for all the different battery banks. So this is our service battery. These are our lithium batteries. This is our stern thruster, bow thruster, and the engine battery. Another nice feature is that if a fuse goes on the boat, it's gonna tell us um, on this diagram which fuse box it is and then if we drill down into the actual fuse box it will actually show us which fuse has gone so we can quickly see um, whether a fuse has gone it's highlighted here red so that's actually pretty useful what I think is probably a little less useful 
um, is having all the lights controlled by here. The good thing is that if we're sailing, for instance, we can turn the navigation lights on from here or from the helm, um, but sometimes I do think a switch would just be a little bit easier. Also here we have access to the radar, the wind instruments, the charts, everything you have from the helm you can view and control here as well, so that's nice. So let's show you the most important feature of this boat, what's almost the most important feature, is the engine. So in here we've got a Yanmar engine, it's a 110 horsepower engine. This boat actually comes with two options and the 110 horsepower turbocharged is actually an upgrade. Um, but we thought because we're doing a, a lot of miles, um, we wanted the bigger engine. I think that was a good decision. So Yanmar 110 horsepower engine here. Behind that, you've got the Fisher Panda generator. So we've got a 10 kilowatt generator on board. We need to use that to top up the batteries if the if the solar can't cope but also we need to use it if we need to use the dive compressor or the water maker that we have on board they're too big to run off the inverter which is the um, lithium batteries um, so if we need to use those things we need to run the generator um, also i store my tools in here as well um, i've made a couple of racks to store um, my toolboxes so we, we try and make the use of every inch of space the one thing that I do really like about this um, design is that the engine's really easy to work on. We've got this big door here to get to the front, but we've actually got four doors, um, two on either side, so you can get to every angle of the engine. So when I service the generator or the engine, it's actually pretty easy to get to the bits that you need to get to. The doors that James is talking about, there's one here in the port aft, One down below in the port aft, and one here, and one here in the starboard aft. We're running lithium batteries on this boat. Um, we upgraded from AGMs. When we first spec the yacht, we had eight AGM batteries. I think we had about 780 amp hours of, of AGM. Um, but the issues with AGM, they're really, really heavy. You can only discharge them to 50 or 60% and they take a long time to charge. The lithiums are much, much better. Um, but at the time we just didn't have the budget for lithiums, but now they are a lot cheaper. So we've swapped over. This is the aft port shower and toilet room. So the boat initially had three toilet rooms and shower rooms and when we first had the boat when we were asked what we wanted on the boat we really needed a washing machine so we decided to take the other bathroom which is the third bathroom and turn it into a washing room so this is a third aft head and shower and this is on the starboard side Honestly, I don't know what I would do without the washing machine. It's been an absolute godsend. This is our spare bedroom. It's for two people. It's on the port side. And as you can see, there's loads of room. And we've got storage as well for anyone that wants to come to stay. Sadly, no one's come to stay for the last year because of COVID. So this has been fairly lonely. Um, at the back there, you can get through to the rudders and the steering and the water maker. Ah! <laughs> I wondered where you'd gone. Yeah. Let me show you the water maker. So for those of you that don't know, a water maker takes in salt water and turns it into fresh drinking water. 
We didn't have it when we originally spec the boat and we were in the Mediterranean for the first couple of years. And to be honest, you don't really need it there. We were never more than sort of three or four days without going into marina where we could top up our tanks. But in the Caribbean, we're often weeks or months without going into marina. So a water maker is absolutely essential. Um, essentially what a water maker does, it sucks in seawater under extremely high pressure and um, the water that comes out of it is drinking, we use it for showering, it's perfect. Um, this water maker that I installed does about 170 litres an hour, so it's quite a beast. So these are the steering cables for the boat. We've got, uh, this is the uh, port side and then we've got a wheel on the starboard side as well. And that goes right up there to the wheel, so it's fairly accessible. These are the shafts for the rudder. Again, if anything comes loose, we can easily get to them. And this is the starboard aft, so this is the third bedroom if you like. But as you can see, we have rather a lot of stuff in here and that's because we need to store all of our cushions, our suitcases and our extra fridge freezer, which came in super handy during the Atlantic crossing. So this could be for another two people. However, we really don't need it for now, so storage. Now we're going to show you the outside. This is our cockpit, and as you can see, it's a pretty big space. Um, the boat's actually 5.28 meters wide, so she's a pretty beamy boat, and that gives us a lot of outside space, which is really, really nice. She's got twin helms, so it doesn't matter which tack you're sailing on, you've always got really good visibility. We've got a 12-inch BMG Vulcan at each helm, um, the H5000 computer and the autopilot. Here we've got bow thruster and stern thruster and the controls for the engine. What's nice about these BMG systems is that you can um, select what view you want to see. So for instance, we've got charts on here, so I can scroll around, zoom in, zoom out. If I go to the menu, I can access the wind plot. So this is telling us where the apparent and where the true wind is along with its speeds. Um, I can access the radar. Um, I can access the forward scan, which is like a forward looking sonar. That's basically showing the, the shape of the seabed in front of the boat. And I've also got the wind plot, which will show us um, a graph, a chart showing the, the, the trends of the wind and the trends of the wind direction. These are also multifunctional displays. So at the moment, um, we've got the, the wind chart on there. Um, but I can scroll through. Um, this is cross-track error when we're um, sailing on a course. Um, it will tell us how far away we are from the waypoint and whether we're falling off track or not. And this is the autopilot. We've got one on each helm. Um, so we can control the autopilot from here. You can adjust the settings and everything. So that's quite good You can also do it from here, but it's nice to have um, proper buttons for it We've also got a remote control for the VHF radio downstairs um, It's quite useful because if someone calls you on the VHF You can't always hear it if it's downstairs, but it comes through here and also we can call other ships or call marinas um, From here without going inside that's especially useful if there's you know, only one or two of you on board and also quite an important feature, it's got a distress button on it, so if something happens um, quickly and you couldn't get into the cockpit to get to the main VHF, you could do a VHF call from here, an emergency call. I'm just about to show you James's favourite part of the entire boat. I'm not going to lie, this is probably the best feature on the boat. Imagine the scene, we're sailing along, it's a hot day, not unlike today. You're thirsty, all you have to do is reach down and grab out a nice cool beer. How good's that? Another nice feature is that we have a sink here. Um, this is really useful if we catch a fish, we can gut the fish, clean the fish all outside, we don't have to bring it inside. When we and catch then, a fish. Yeah, when we catch a fish, <laughs> we don't always catch fish. And then on the other side we have a, a barbecue that folds up, so that's also really nice for anchor, we can have a barbecue. 
And this here is the bathing platform. This is at the back of the boat. And we have two buttons. We have a remote control and a button on the side to lower it down. We're particularly lucky because not many boats have this feature. For most boats you have to climb up the back and onto the boat, whereas we have this really wide platform. It's about a metre and a half long. So you just jump off onto the back and obviously you can put everything out, like our scuba gear, the boat, tender, and all our other equipment. This here is a ladder, which is otherwise known as a passerelle. We don't often use it, but it's basically for when you're trying to reach the dock from the boat and it's just not possible to reach. So this comes out and it extends onto the dock and then we can walk along safely from the boat to the dock. This here is the tender garage. As you can see, we've got loads of things in it at the moment. We've got our boards, we've got all our snorkeling gear, we have all our brushes, we have our cans. And at the minute we've packed everything in there because we have the tender out in the water at the minute. So how this works is the bathing platform comes down, we can pull in the tender and that's where it sits when we're sailing. Uh, when we're not sailing we tend to have the tender out the back and we put all of our scuba gear, swimming gear and snorkeling gear in the back here. When we first bought the boat we had a different anchor to the one we've got now and because we had never had a boat before I don't think until you have a boat you realise just how important an anchor is. We changed our anchor because we really wanted to be very sure of how stable and secure we'd be at night when we are sleeping. Obviously you don't want to drift off in the middle of the night. So we now have a rockner and it's wonderful because we can sleep easy and know that we're not going anywhere. Let me show you. As you can see here, here's our rockner and it's tied on just to make sure that it doesn't fall when we're sailing. We keep it tied on just for security. The Bavaria features a flat coach roof. There is also an impressive amount of light from the Lumar flush hatches. So in here we have the sail locker. Um, as you can see, it's pretty full. We've got two spare sails in there. We've got a cruising chute, which is a downwind sail. And we've also got a Code Zero, which is a light wind sail. Um, I've got all my kiteboarding equipment in there. We keep the fenders for the boat in there, a whole load of stuff in there. But it's a really useful space. It's quite a large space as well, so we can get a lot in there. So on this boat, we've got an Epex mainsail, and then we've got a self-tacking jib, both made by Elvstrom. Um, the other sails we have, we have a Code Zero, and we also have a cruising chute, which is a downwind sail. Um, the main sail is in mast furling, so we pull it into the mast and it wraps around inside the mast. And then the self tacking jib is just on a furler. Then we've got a second furler in front of that, and that's used for the code zero and also the cruising chute. So, this is our solar arch. We had this custom built when we spec the yachts. We've got uh, 960 watts of solar which is just about enough for the boat. We're actually probably going to get a couple more solar panels because our um, consumption is quite high. Um, but that produces about four and a half kilowatts per day. Probably the most important thing is the offshore life raft that we've got. So that lives down here. Um, if there was an emergency, you'd pull it out and then throw it overboard and that would inflate. It's attached to the boat, so you'd only sever that if you really need to abandon ship. Um, this is our grab bag. So in here we have sort of a survival kit. We've got water, we've got some food, we've got some flares, we've got a fishing kit, we've got a VHF radio, we've got a USB um, power pack and, and various other things. So we'd grab this if we needed to go into the life raft. So this is an automatic Dan Boy. Um, you might have seen on some other boats like a long stick with a light or a flag and a float at the bottom. This is the equivalent of that, but it's automatic. So when we open it, it falls in the water and it inflates. What you use this for, if there was a man overboard, you deploy this, that would mark the spot and also give them something to swim to that they could hold on to and um, provide a float for them. Um, so that's an important bit of kit. So this is a safety sling. So again, if there was a man overboard instant, once
once we got near to that person, we could drive, sort of steer the boat in a loop around them, deploy this, and it's a long, long rope with a, a floating hoop. They put that around them, and then we can get that rope, put it on a winch, and winch them in. This is what's called an EPIRB. Um, if we were in an emergency situation and we had to abandon the ship, we would take this with us. It floats, once it's activated, it sends out um, a distress signal. It operates everywhere in the world and it's linked to this vessel. So as soon as the emergency services um, see this go off, they know it's Equus and it marks the location. And I think it transmits for at least 24 hours. It might even be 48 hours. Um, but that's vital if you, uh, you know, if you have to abandon the ship and go into the life raft, it's vital that you've got this. So here is some more emergency equipment. We keep it underneath the seat of the chart plotter so it's easy to get to. There's lots of room in there and we don't keep anything else in there apart from this equipment. You've got these here which are called bungs and they come in different sizes. If there was a hole in the boat with a through hole fitting, we can put one of these in and it stops the water coming in. Here we have an axe, so say for example there was an issue that's more on the outside of the boat and we can't get to it, we can bash through some of these panels and get through to the problem area quicker. This here is called epoxy putty stick and this can be used underwater, so if there's water coming in and we need to block a hole, this epoxy putty stick is great for underwater conditions. In this container here we have all different kinds of flares and we have a first aid kit also in here. Thank you so much for watching us today. We hope we covered everything here on Equus. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to comment in the comments below and we'll be very happy to answer any questions. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.